Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Health Zone with Gilbert Chia. My name is Gilbert Chia, I'm the editor of Health Zone Singapore, a Facebook page that's dedicated to covering health and wellness issues, specifically from a Singapore and regional perspective. So this week, I wanted to follow up on a show that we did two weeks ago, where I had talked about the five surprising uh, health facts. And today, I want to share with you five health myths that many people believe in, but which I want to show you and explain to you why they are not true and why you shouldn't believe these things. Because believing the wrong things is as dangerous as not knowing what are the right things. So let's get down to it. Myth number one is that, and this is a very common one, is that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. How many of us have heard this time and time again? This is a really pervasive belief that many people accept as if it was the gospel truth. But do you know how this belief came about? It was started in the 1940s by American companies selling breakfast cereals and bacon. So of course they had a vested interest in making sure that as many people as possible eat a big breakfast. The fact is, breakfast is not an essential meal for everyone, and it all depends on your own lifestyle and habits. What's more important than eating breakfast is the number of hours between your dinner or supper and your first meal of the day. If you eat late, it would actually be healthier for you to skip breakfast as your body benefits in many ways when it has a longer period without food. You can lower your blood sugar and insulin, insulin levels during this period when you are not eating. This is the idea behind the practice of intermittent fasting, which has been proven to help people lose weight, reduce fat, increase energy, and even reverse type 2 diabetes. In one form of intermittent fasting, people skip eating for 16 hours of the day, including your sleep time. So for example, if you eat dinner at 8 p.m., you would avoid eating anything until noon the next day. But even if you are not doing intermittent fasting, it is still a good idea to take advantage of the overnight period to refrain from eating for at least 12 hours. At one time when people had smaller meals, ate dinner early and went to bed without snacking on anything, replenishing the body without, with food in the morning was necessary. But let's face it, most of us eat way too much. We have big dinners and even dessert, have a snack after dinner, and we go to bed full. We wake up eight hours later and eat again. This is not only unnecessary, it can also be very unhealthy, especially if what we eat for breakfast is a high calorie, starchy or sugary meal. For example, kaya toast, breakfast cereals, noodles, rice, etc. If you do want to eat breakfast, always make sure it's a healthy one that is high in protein and low in simple carbs and sugars. But don't feel that you must eat breakfast. For most people, it is just a habit and not one that everybody needs to follow. We go on to myth number two. Red wine is good for health. Now, one of the reasons why this belief became so widespread was that there were many studies showing that people in the Mediterranean region, in, in France, for example, ate a lot of butter and cream, which is saturated fat. But they had lower incidences of heart disease than people in the US. It was called the French paradox, as researchers speculated that perhaps one of the reasons why was because people drank a lot of red wine, which contains antioxidants and polyphenols, specifically a very powerful one known as resveratrol. But the levels of these polyphenols in red wine is actually very low. And most studies that were showing their benefits were actually looking at taking these compounds as a supplement and not by drinking the wine itself. It's also been shown that this so-called French paradox might actually be an illusion caused by different ways of measuring heart disease statistics between France and the US. It's also important to note some very important differences between the French and the US diet. The French may eat more butter and cream, but they also eat less sugar, less processed foods, and less trans fat than Americans. And these are clearly important factors that contribute to fewer heart disease cases of the French versus the Americans. 
Moreover, and this is very important, red wine, as with any type of alcohol, has negative effects on health that outweigh its small benefits. Heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, liver disease, and even certain types of cancer are just of the few health risks that are strongly associated with prolonged alcohol consumption. In fact, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified alcohol as carcinogenic to humans, putting it on the same class as tobacco when it comes to cancer. So the reality is that although red wine does contain some beneficial compounds, these are in small amounts and the overall benefits of red wine are outweighed by the greater health, health risk from alcohol consumption. Now, the good news is that the beneficial compounds in red wine are plentiful in other foods that don't have the health risk of alcohol. Resveratrol is also found in the skin of red grapes, red grape, grape juice, in peanuts and peanut butter, in dark chocolate, blueberries and cranberries, for example. One thing about resveratrol to keep in mind is that it is absorbed much better in the mouth than when it's actually eaten or swallowed. So grape juice, for example, will have a better effect than, say, taking a pill. And myth number three, fruit juice is good for you. Now, this image of fruit juice as being healthy was again largely influenced by advertising by orange juice companies in the US in the 1950s until today. Photos of beautiful glasses of orange juice tempt us into believing that they are synonymous with healthy diets. But what these lovely photos don't tell you is that fruit juice is loaded with sugar. Whether they are freshly pressed or prepackaged, they contain as much if not more sugar than a can of a soft drink. One 300 ml glass of orange juice contains 33 grams or 7 teaspoons of sugar. One 300 ml glass of red apple juice contains 40 grams or 8 teaspoons of sugar. When you're juicing any fruit, you're actually removing most of the pulp in the skin and extracting just the liquid. So it's a very concentrated form of the sugars. The number of fruits you're consuming also multiplies compared to how many you will eat if it was the whole fruit. Think about it. It takes about five oranges to give you a 300 ml glass of orange juice. You wouldn't be able to eat five oranges a day or five apples, but it's very easy to drink one glass of juice and consume the calories and sugar content of five oranges or apples in one shot. Also, when you eat a whole fruit, you're eating the pulp and skin, which is essential fiber that is very good for you, and it also fills you up. All that fiber and pulp and skin are missing from fruit juices. So it's much healthier to eat a whole fruit than to just drink the juice. Next, myth number four. Natural sugar is better for you than refined sugar. Now, what do I mean by this? For example, many people believe that honey or raw sugar or agave nectar are better for you. First of all, let's look at the term natural sugar. It doesn't make sense because ordinary white table sugar comes from sugarcane plants, so it's already natural. The truth is, to your body, sugar is sugar. Whether you consume honey or raw sugar or fruit sugar, it is still going to be converted into glucose, which your body uses for energy. The same thing happens when you consume starchy carbs, such as rice or potatoes or noodles. It's all converted by your body into glucose. Honey is also significantly higher in calories than sugar. One tablespoon of sugar has 46 calories, while a tablespoon of honey has 64 calories, and that's almost 50% higher. Now, honey does contain small amounts of nutrients, which are good for you, such as minerals and antioxidants but the quantities are really small. So you would have to consume a lot of honey for it to make any real benefit. So it's important to moderate your intake of all kinds of sugar and don't fall into the trap of thinking that one is more natural and therefore better than the other. We go on to now myth number five. Myth number five is that eating high cholesterol foods will increase your cholesterol levels. Now, this is a common belief that if we eat high cholesterol foods, such as eggs, for example, we will end up having high cholesterol in our bodies. It seems to make sense, right? 
For many years, medical professionals did advise and warn people to avoid high cholesterol foods. But extensive research has shown that high cholesterol foods by themselves do not increase cholesterol levels, and especially they do not contribute significantly to cardiovascular disease. The body actually makes all the cholesterol it needs, and it also absorbs a relatively small amount of cholesterol from some foods. Most of the cholesterol in your blood is actually not from the foods you're consuming, but it's actually produced by your own liver. Your genes play a bigger role in your cholesterol level than your diet, as genetics determines how effectively your liver will regulate your cholesterol level. Now, if you're, you have a family history of heart disease or if you have high levels of the bad LDL cholesterol, a low cholesterol diet may be beneficial for you and help protect you from heart disease. But for the rest of the people who don't have this genetic trait, high cholesterol foods, especially those that contain more of the good HDL cholesterol, are not going to increase your cholesterol levels. But that doesn't mean that diet doesn't play a role in high cholesterol and heart disease. There are foods that do raise bad cholesterol levels, and the two worst culprits are bad fats and simple starchy carbohydrates. That's right. The biggest influence on blood cholesterol level is the amount of fats and carbohydrates in your diet, not the amount of cholesterol you eat from food. The two bad fats you have to watch out for especially are trans fats and saturated fats, along with the simple starchy carbohydrates. These foods, especially when eaten together or in huge amounts or big amounts, will increase your bad cholesterol levels, increase the amount of triglyceride, which is fat in your blood, and therefore increase your heart, your risk of heart disease and diabetes. And trans fat is especially bad. It not only increases the levels of the bad LDL cholesterol, it also reduces the amount of the good LDL, HDL cholesterol, so it is doubly bad. So there you have it, five health myths that are widely believed by many people. So now you know the truth about them. Thanks very much for joining me on this episode of Health Zone with Gilbert Chia. Do subscribe, like, and leave your comments on what you'd like to see in other shows. And we'll bring you more helpful, in interesting, and informative uh, shows coming up. Thanks a lot for joining us.